Stone, MC Murr coming at you on another enthralling Tuesday night live stream. And man, it has been long enough. Long enough of a wait to get into this series. And you know, I have my reasons. I really do. You know, when Nino Cooney launched, I did not have a PS3 at the time. So, as much as I didn't want to be excluded from playing this game, I kind of just was. Now, not long after that, I got a PS3 for free. Because that's how MC Murr does it. But I still didn't hop right on this because I'd missed it. It had come out. The excitement had come and gone. I still wanted to play it, but all the collector stuff from the edition, first edition and everything was very expensive at auction. Hard to get. You know, there was a collector's edition of the guide that was a big white hardback wizard book with a bunch of dlc in it god i still want that that's like 50 bucks at auction still it's ridiculous mr drippy wait for me so up until this point i just haven't got in on this and because we've got nino kuni 2 revenant kingdom coming out and because this has always looked like my kind of game and because there's a 200 hundred dollar freaking collector's edition coming out that i'm going to be getting an unboxing right here on the channel it's about time to prep for this and get ready by playing the first one finally for god's sake welcome gen x grown-up team we got mo and john in the house welcome t welcome cm retro gaming for this edition of tuesday night live with mc Murr. you only ever come to see me now let me explain why this is not exactly prepping for nino kuni 2. Hmm. Different protagonists, different storylines, not necessarily a different kind of game from what I can tell, although it seems like they're trying to coin it as that. He will drive up. But you don't necessarily need to have beaten this game to get in on the second one, and that's an important thing to note. Although I think most fans, most people looking forward to this, played the living poop out of this and are more than ready for the second one. But again, me, with my undying backlog from hell... I just haven't gotten to this yet. Very well. You shall have my aid. We talked about the collector's edition coming out on the uh, Gen X podcast, as a matter of fact, when I was honored to be a guest there. Oh, yeah. Clean for God. One of the things I am definitely looking forward to. We unbox a lot of collector's editions here on the channel. Not all of them are $200 giant crates that look like they should be delivered by tractor trailer truck. <laughs> But that's what this thing looks like. Statues, stuffed animals, art books, freaking you name it. I'm sure it'll be a steel book. We live for this stuff. Can I really do it? Welcome Jason Joseph and welcome Michael Creamer to our stream. Sure I do. It is time for Tuesday Night Live with MC Mert. So this is of course Studio Ghibli. How can you not tell? And while they're not involved with them on this sequel, they still retained a sound, you know, music guy and a character designer. And you can still tell that the artwork is somewhat the same. And of course, that's a good thing. It wouldn't really look right if it wasn't. So this game, with its unique combat style, blurring a line between somewhat of action but somewhat turn-based too, it still retains the qualities I need. It still is able to meet the criteria it has to meet for it to be an RPG in my book and one that I'm going to enjoy playing. Too many RPGs are going the way of the hack and slash these days, and I got news for all these freaking game designers. That's not an RPG. Just because the dude's holding a sword does not mean this is a role-playing game. 
doesn't. Cast Form Familiar. What's this? That's tidy work, Ollie boy. Look at that. A warrior from your very own heart. A familiar. This is a familiar? That's right. The fighting spirit inside you made flesh. A soldier of your soul. And he can really help me. So John asks, does a lamp nose ring make it an RPG? Technically, it cannot. Having an inventory alone will not make it an RPG. And so many games nowadays mislabel themselves that. I think to the point where they're trying to draw in fans of a genre that they're just not. You know, it's 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 a mislabel. And that's going to be a topic for future podcasts. I don't want to blab about that too much right now because tonight's subject, of course, is Nino Cooney and this great sequel that we've got coming and the differences, gameplay, combat, content, what we can expect from that. But yeah, that is a loaded, loaded freaking topic. We're still reeling from the effects of a crash in our uh, capture card software and whatnot, so if any of you listening tonight hear any sound issues or anything you would like me to tweak to make your experience more enjoyable, please let me know in the chat. Still trying to tweak this thing back to where we had it. Give your first familiar a name. Well, they think it should be Mighty, so I guess we're going to go with that. Well, I mean, he's a mite. Seems appropriate. Another great example of, you know, resorting to ridiculous hacking and slashing and combat and stuff. You know, the Tales games as of late and uh, what they did with Valkyria Revolution. And look what those games did. I mean, they were in the bargain bin before they even hit the shelf. Nobody asked for that. Don't give them that. Innovation is one thing. A total sidestep is quite another. We're joined by... Hav G's one two one two checking the mic to the grill off it and a rock all night to the morning light. And as far as adding my smiling face to the stream, we'll get there. Still doing some technology upgrades to the studio here. We do need webcams and some cabling and Still trying to work with the software that we've got here, so you don't always see my smiling face on these things, but then again, my face isn't always smiling. But there's going to be big upgrades in 2018, and we'll talk about that in future videos. Lots of great stuff coming your way, and lots of changes we're making to uh, better your experience. So Healing Touch, Fireball, getting some, we're getting here some useful spells here. We're also joined by that game collector. Welcome DGC to our Tuesday night live stream of Nino Cooney prepping for the sequel Revenant Kingdom, the collector's edition, coming right here to you on the MC Mer Show. Cannot wait for that unboxing. It will require a crowbar. Uh oh. Huh? Spoiling for a fight, is it? Better give him what he wants, Solly boy. Huh? But what do I do? Just So we've got the little booger dude with a serious Scottish accent, like he's a Highlander warrior when he's really just a little booger. Here goes. And the monsters are almost comical that he's fighting against, but after all, he is a little boy with a stick. Come on! The animations in this game are just amazing. I just love the art style. And again, this, this comes off like I didn't know about this and I discovered this game yesterday. I've wanted this game since day one. But without a PS3 at that time, or a way to play this at MC Mer prices, I had to sidestep it. Not what I wanted done, though. And then it wasn't as easy to pick up later on at a price that I was okay with.
He has a sign. DGC asks, am I going to play Xenoblade 2? I'm into it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll play all the way through that one. But gosh, we've just got such a heavy schedule this first quarter already. It's hard to say how much of it I'm going to be able to get to. Anytime soon, anyway. But it is great. I absolutely love what they did with it. Wadoosh, wadoosh. We're joined by Mr. Tight White. Welcome TW to our Tuesday night live stream of Nino Kuni prepping for the sequel coming out in March. It was actually slated for this month and was delayed, which honestly is okay. Because then I end up scoring a copy of this game for 10 bucks. It's still upwards of 15 to 20 at times. So that I can get in on this and maybe get through it before the sequel, even though that's not required. We joked about on the podcast that I waited so long to play this freaking game about a little boy named Oliver that we've given birth to our own little boy named Oliver here since then. And that wasn't the reason we named him that, but... It's funny coincidence. Yeah, DGC, Xenoblade is a masterpiece, and a lot of people that are big fans of it really had issues with a lot of things in it, which it's hard for me to speak about, even though I've got all the other Xenoblades as we discussed in the unboxing. This is the first stab I've taken at actually playing one, and I'm just not seeing any problems with it just yet. like the character design. The combat's a little wacky, but it's growing on me. So I gotta lock this dude in a cage and give him cupcakes. Welcome Retro Heck to our Tuesday night live stream of Nino Kuni prepping for Revenant Kingdom coming up this quarter. You were with us last night for some Battlefront. Man, that was a good time. Can't wait to play more of that too. That was super fun. That was more fun than I really thought it was going to be. So a lot of people early reviewing uh, Revenant Kingdom, and most of them it seems like they're at conventions and whatnot, but they're really acting like it's so much different than this game here. And I don't see it. I mean, they talk about, oh, this overworld thing is so different. They turn into chibi-looking versions of themselves, and it's like, it's not so much different from this. I mean, they're talking about getting a real Final Fantasy VII vibe from it as far as the maneuvering through the overworld, and that's kind of what I get from this, too. I like that you can see the enemies on the screen, so it's not just random and you're in a fight, you know. That way you can evade if you want to, or if you're grinding, it's not just mindless running around. I kind of like that.
I mean, you, you, this looks like a cutscene, the animation and its actual gameplay. It's so seamless. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's almost easy to think that this is not one of those games where in these smaller sub areas it's more closed off and less open world but there's not really that big of a beef with that there are more rpgs or so called that are coming out now that even their overworlds are this way and it's just like this isn't an open world just because i can move more than right or left does not an open world make now, some people can argue, hey, you like lots of old-school RPGs that aren't open-world. But you know what? We've set new standards in games. And to move forward, to really be cutting edge, to have the next best thing, unfortunately, the bar's been set. Jump over it or don't. Oh, yeah, crawling with monsters. That's what we want to see. That's what I've been waiting for. Jesus. Some people don't like RPGs, too, that are incredibly story-driven and are full of cutscenes. This one definitely is. And it sounds like I'm saying that that's a bad thing. To me, it's not. But I've had people bail on me on Witcher 3 because they didn't like th that it was so full of cutscenes. Regardless of whether or not they were interacting with them. We were just discussing Xenoblade 2 a minute ago. I'm talking about some 30 minute dadgum cutscene. You'll forget you're playing a freaking game. We were on our Disney vacation. I'm playing it on the Switch. And we're on a boat going across the waters on uh, in the Epcot part. Going over to the World Showcase. And they're like, it's time to get off the boat. And my wife's like, come on, get everything. Grab the diaper bag. Grab the stroller. I was like, dude, I'm in the middle of a cutscene. Alright? So let this... Big boob sword woman get done talking and telling this dude what he's going to do. You know, you don't want to miss anything. Then later on you're like, oh, why is that happening? Oh, yeah, that's what dude said about what he was going to do about that. I miss the days when I could give these things my undivided attention. <laughs> Look at him wobbling on the rock. I mean, just the animation is just sick. Absolutely sick. A monster of some kind. A chest. They almost resemble Pokemon, these creatures. A whippersnapper. I'll take care of it. What is a Scrooge? Uh oh, I've been blinded. You want to scrap? I have a stick. So everything's got a cooldown, you know. It's still turn-based in a sense, but you can maneuver around, get some attacks from behind if you want extra damage done. There are a lot of games going that route now. We recently started Fairy Fencer F uh, Dark Advent. It's like that. He got a ice cream sundae. That's what he wants done. A bar of chocolate. Pillar of Conflict says he went to Walt Disney World this May and could have stayed in the Germany section of Epcot all day. Good beer. Yeah, Epcot, boy, you were going to eat and you were going to drink. And it's just ridiculous. Definitely my favorite part. I could just do that all week and not do any of the other stuff.
Boy, this really is like a Pokemon at that point. They got tricks, they can only do so many, one knocks out another, and so on and so forth. So he doesn't have any of those things. And those are his tricks. Interesting. So he's going to unlock these at higher levels. So we need to be using him. Yeah, this is on the PS3. Now, of course, the sequel will be on PS4. Let's go! Alright, well, let's call the familiar out here. He seems to do more damage than the kid. What is Yeet the dude. The only reason I got my PS3 free is I bought it off this dude for like a hundred bucks, which was a ripoff, but it included a giant tub of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, which I could not care less about. And when I say a giant tub, I mean like 10,000 Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I'm like, man, if there's any money to be made here, I'm taking a shot downfield, but if there's any money to be made here, I have a shot. I mean, I made about 250 bucks off selling the cards in some of them in bulk that were worthless and selling some of them that were worth money by themselves. So, yeah, made a nice cozy little profit on that and bagged the PS3 at a net cost of zero. Uh, paid to keep it like an extreme couponer, and that's why we do it. I feel like I'm missing something here. Like, I should have just went down that narrow path back there, but I feel like... I can't tell which one of these is the main course, and I don't want to miss any hidden chests or any items. A poop on a bun. Whoa, but up, whoa, hidden chest. Man, he's getting all the things that I like. He's got chocolate, he's got ice cream, he's got iced coffee. This kid's living it up. we can keep going this way does it all just go back into itself it's hard to tell yeah it does I remember seeing that little pecker head from over there come on so again completely different characters for the sequel completely different story you're Edward Lord Von Periwinkle the Fifth, or something his name is. A boy king of some kind. I need to gnaw on some bread. Oh yeah, we're good. We're cool on the gang now. So the most exciting thing for me about the second one is just unboxing that collector's edition. And it's, you know, for me, it's revenge on not getting all the collector's stuff of this game when it came out. Because, I mean, I just... In hindsight, I wish I'd have just gotten it. Because now it's going to be very expensive to procure all that. I don't even have a white label copy of the game. I got the Greatest Hits Edition. Ten bucks. I mean, 
Not the best deal you're going to find on this one in a retail setting. Never have seen this game in the wild. Never. And for as many people as I knew that were in love with this, enamored with it, were playing with it, buying copies of it from our local GameStop, never found anyone that had a copy. Looks like we're fixing a scrap. Well, this thing's pissed. Not having what he wants done on this particular day. A guardian of the woods. If you're watching, I encourage you to leave a like on this video while you're hanging out. And if you have not already done so, subscribe to the MC Merch Show if you like watching people play games day one, unbox large collector's editions of games day one, and of course all the fun yard sale findings and scavenging that we find and share with you right here on the show. Lots of fun to be had. Love to have you on board. Love to get a conversation going with you. I don't know if this little booger can handle this. Oh, son of a... Jesus! How is he supposed to scrap with this big thing? Look at him scrapping. Back up, he's swinging. Whoa, us! Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 whoa, hang on, buddy. You'd best defend yourself. You've seen the defend command. Well, what I want to do is use an item. Is that illegal? Well, he's not going to defend against that. All right, now there has to be a way to use an item, right? Yeah, provisions. Roger. Oh, you pecker. Uh-oh. Okay, that's all right. Put that stick up his butt. Unable to act. Oh, I'm about to get crushed. I gotta defend when he does that stuff. No, I didn't want to call him back out. That was a good move, but we need to be able to use some bread here. Well, I'm not clear on how this works. Yeah, I was defeated because I can't eat my bread, fool. And that's why I don't care for this shit with this... You know, there was nothing wrong with turn-based. Nothing! There was nothing wrong with it. Because how the hell is some bitch going to pull out a piece of bread and eat it while he's wrestling Swamp Thing in the freaking forest? You ever ate bread while you wrestled Swamp Thing in the fucking forest? No, you haven't, because the last thing on your mind while you're wrestling Swamp Thing in the... And look at that, I'm going to lose my money. You will lose all your money. No. 
If I return to the title screen... Yeah, I'll return to the title screen. I don't want to lose my money. The furthest thing on your mind from when you're wrestling Swamp Thing in the forest is eating a piece of bread. And that's why you've got turn-based RPGs. I'm not saying this combat system isn't totally enjoyable once you get the hang of it. But you don't have the hang of it. It's not what you'd expect. And they always think they gotta razzle-dazzle us with new things when they put these games out. To me, the purpose of playing an RPG versus, versus an action game that's got you biting your freaking fingernails is so you can calm down, so you can play a game with one hand and drink a cup of coffee with the other. We've gotten so far away from that with new RPGs that we're never going to return to it, I don't think. I really don't think we're ever going to return to it. They've already said Final Fantasy VII is going to be, you know, the remake is just going to be another stupid hack and slash game. Final Fantasy XV didn't do it for me. I've already got rid of it. Don't care if I get it back. Got top dollar for it while I could. I don't want it. I don't want it. It's, the, it's not fun. The combat's not fun. It's stupid. That's not Final Fantasy. And I'm not saying this has to be. But you saw what happened. I had a way to heal myself. And because I couldn't access it or make the menu do what I needed to do while in real time I'm getting the living shit schnockered out of me. We got killed. So here's Swamp Thing again. Now apparently the familiar can't eat bread. Well that makes sense to me. Familiars don't eat bread. But I gotta figure out how to switch back and forth between the dude. And I guess I'm just not gonna use him because dad gum. Although I'm sure that based on the attacks that he does, being a lot more than the damage this little peckerhead can do, it's really not an option. He's getting rocked. Bread for the win! Do I have a spell? Oh yeah, look at this boy. How about a fireball up your butt? Ooh, you didn't like that, did you? That's cooling down. How about a fireball, big boy? How about a magic missile? Uh-oh, I'm stunned. Snap out of it, kid. Snap out of it. Why, rabbit a duke Okay, I'll defend myself. But I wanted to throw a fireball at his ass. Yeah, I hear you, Captain. The lack of uh, notifications, it does us all an injustice, including YouTube. They need people to view things. That's the whole basis of this thing. Fix your shit. All right, no, see, I didn't want to do that. I want to eat bread. Any chance that my iced coffee... Yeah, I figured it did. Because iced coffee... I know normally when I drink an iced coffee, I get magic powers. So, that's some role-playing logic right there. Yeah, suck it, big boy. Wadasha Scrooge. Spell cools down. You dadded a rash. I don't... Okay, I got enough for one more. What bloke a doke I'm stunned. Snap out of it, kid. There's magic over there if we can go pick it up. Oh, I didn't get my defense up. Alright, it's cool. It's cool. Dead gummit, Oliver, get over there. Got him. That's a gold glim mun. That little beauty will restore all your HP for you. Well, what are we waiting for? And not only that, I'll also let you do a miracle move that does not tidy. All right. I'm going to get it. Uh, did I not get it? 
now I get hit with that. Dude, I got it. Holy! This. All right, we dropped that thing and we got paid for doing it. Oliver's level four. That thing wasn't here to play. Oh, he's just going to meander back into the woods and take a dump. So we didn't kill him. I should clarify again, I don't hate this combat system. At least it blurs the line between a hack and slash deal and, you know, turn based. But still, I would rather it just be turn based. There was never anything wrong with that. And the theory behind that is if there was Dragon Warrior, Final Fantasy, Ultima, none of those games would be legends today. Or in their own time either, because it wouldn't have been, no one would have enjoyed that. Obviously, somebody did. They're making games today, indie games, that play exactly like that. They're, and they call them nods to that era. No, they're not. You're just making some, I mean, they are, but it, it, you don't have to refer to it like that. You're just doing something that's tried and true, like having a Coca-Cola on ice. Sometimes it's nice to know what to expect. Reinventing the wheel is very overrated. God, it's just, it's literally the whole gaming industry is doing it in every genre. Oh, that was perfect last time. Let's change it completely. No! To come, the guardian of the Don't! Past. And I found what I was looking for. But first, a gift. My way of thanks. Gee. You were on a roll, by your man. So the new game, the sequel, much like these familiars, he's got all these little colored boogers that run around. They're like Pikmin. And yeah, I'm sure that's where they got the influence. I'd call him on it if I had him right in front of me. Ah, you ripped off Pikmin. But that's okay. Uh, got to use those to influence certain things in battle and make things go your way. And again, I just wonder how much of that's going to interfere with just the flow of good old RPG combat. Fragments of the human heart. To rescue the heartbroken, you will need the locket and the spells required to use it. I will give you those as well. Thank you so much, old Father Oak. Hmm. Such a well-mannered child. Unlike some I could mention. What? I... All right, all right. Ta, Buckface. Hmm. Some things are as unchanging as the forest. No matter. You had best be on your way. Now, boy. You must come and see me from time to time. And tell me of your travels. I look forward to hearing of your progress. All right, we'll keep yes, in sir. touch, Mr. Tree. Let's be off, shall we? Time to head back to Ding Dong Dell. He said Ding Dong. Okay. A locket. A page. Another page. Yeet the giant tree on the map. Liberate some of a consenting subject's emotional essence. Sounds complicated. All right, Ollie, let's do it. Mm -hmm. 
can't remember if it saved for us or not, so. Can't save your game too much. Speaking of games like Witcher 3, some of those games are designed to really punish you and teach you that lesson. In a world where we've gone soft with autosaves, you know, some of them don't do it that way, man. You get all into it and then you realize you died and you got four hours worth of work lost. He has to restore his ding-dong to normal. <coughs> There's problems with my ding dong. Ah. Let's go. Rotbergs has joined us. Welcome to our Tuesday night live stream. Dude, this little familiar guy's dropping bows. Why is he so much stronger than the kid? I guess because he's got a sword and I have a stick. Poison be gone. Oh, you want some? Look at you getting all your damn Metal Gear up in my face with an exclamation point over your head. Come on, fool. Let's go. Fixing to sick a stuffed animal on you. Here goes. Send Bubba the Frog out there to handle you. Hey, come on, buddy. He's quite the swashbuckler, that one. Oh, you want some? So, yeah, again, I think both games end up with a very Final Fantasy 7-ish feel to the overworld, and that's a good thing. But a lot of the stuff they were describing about the new game just didn't seem so far, you know, removed from the old one, which is fine. Again, I don't, I'm not preaching that, oh, I'm not busting its balls. I don't want it to be different. Quit changing it. If this game was such a hit, aren't you an idiot if you do change it? Again, we were just talking about Valkyria Revolution. Perfect example of that. Valkyria Chronicles. It's a legend. People love it. So they went and changed the entire dynamic of the game without anyone even being the wiser. And it comes out and it's a broiled turd. And there's nothing but freaking YouTube videos of people going, Sega, what have you done? Hoop de hoop. But they're, you know... As clickbaity as that is, that's a good question. It was a really good question. I dodged a bullet on that one. I canceled my order. Even though it was a box set that came with extras, I was like, you know what? The game stinks. That thing was being sold as low as 10 bucks on the Zon recently. It's like, man, you all really dropped the ball here. And it's only because you changed it. Did you ever consider that if it was perfect, then you have nowhere to go but down? That any change is going to upset people? And look at this freaking lizard sucking himself off. He's an Ouroboros. Pro Retro Hunter says he's three away on a hundred subs. That's a good place to be. Loving them milestones. Again, we're going to do, uh, we're, we'll have a video up later this week for my giveaway for 250 now that we've hit it. And thank you to all of you that watch and support. Making it possible. Because it's it's a very empowering thing to know that it is possible. I and mean, you all hear me talk a lot about when I first came to this, I just wanted to broadcast some gameplay. I've been gaming since 1985. I've got a reason to show what I do. And I think I have things to share that are worth hearing about. But I never in a million years thought anyone would give that much of a crap about it. 
And who knows how much more of a crap they'll give. So, onward and upward from here. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you want some? Chickadee? Let's scrap. Come on! Yeah, Captain, the, uh, the animation on this game is just gorgeous. I mean, it's just so fluid and... I mean, hell, I don't know how hard that is to make a working cartoon actually behave like a game, but they've done it here, and it's a joy to look at. And again, this game is not supposed to be any kind of surprise for me. I've always known of it, about it, what it is, what it does. I just was not in a position to buy and enjoy it when it launched. I wasn't a PS3 guy. Welcome back to Ding Dong Dell. I think they just wanted to say Ding Dong. Why else would you name a city that? Looks like he's still so I believe there was a stuffed animal of Mr. Drippy on the original one in a collector's edition, if I'm not mistaken. There is a, a, a stuffed animal of the little guy in the second one who is not Mr. Drippy, but he's not much unlike him. He's a little bizarre turd and you can't really tell what he is. That's right. One of the bits we'll all make. And I'm sure Molly will take him and run away after I've unboxed it. I don't understand. And I'll find him under her bed. Ah, just give it a go. You'll soon work it out, man. First off, what that guard's missing is a drop of good old-fashioned enthusiasm. Find some and give it to him, and he'll be right as rain. Okay, but where do I find enthusiasm? Well, now, feast your eyes on that other guard there. He's got more get up and go than a sack of squirrels. If he hasn't got some enthusiasm to spare, I'm a monkey's uncle. That's nicely. I like that. More get up and go than a sack of squirrels. I'll try my best. Mm. Borrow some enthusiasm. Okay, see, I was way ahead of him there. It just wouldn't let me do it. Ravage the land as never before. Total destruction from mountain to shore. <laughs> okay, here goes. Somebody's doing something in the background there. <laughs> Who knows what all these things are, but here's this. Looks like he's back in the land of the living. What's happening? Where am I? Well, 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 you're back with us, I see. Yes, I, I feel so strange. As if a weight has been lifted from my heart. I feel better. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. I was worried about it. Maybe he crapped his pants. I wasn't myself. But I'm back now. His nose piece looks like a ding dong. Maybe that's why they made the official helmets of Ding Dong Dell. It bears the crest of the ding dong. Their shields probably do too. This way, everybody. And prepare for an audience with King Dugan, Lord of Ding Dong Dell. I'll do just that. Is 
The Cat King, huh? So he's not a person whom I can give a fun, punny, ding-dong name to. Alright, we're finally here. We're finally in Ding Dong Dell. The Hootique. Oh my. Pardon me, ma'am. What? Pee pee time? Okay, now she's not peeing standing up, I know, because I'm assuming that's a. Okay, mind blown. We're in Ding Dong Dell, and one of the first people I talk to is talking about taking a pee pee. Can I pee behind a tree? Well, young man, what do you think of my ding-dong? <laughs> oh, he can go on in, can't he? Pro Retro Hunter says, playing Darkness 2. I haven't played the darkness games. I know of them. I've been told that they're dark. A proprietor. So these are cat people? So maybe by peeing over there she was marking territory? Although that's more of a male cat thing. And there's a cake and a vase sitting out on the floor, so that's not weird. Can I come back here? I can't. Alright then. Can't go in there. If you're not open, you really should keep your door shut. Thanks for the cupcake. Ah. <laughs> oh, here's something in here. Okay, we can't go in there. Oh, but I want to explore first. Surely you're not going to make me go straight to the dadgum castle. Turned out nice again, didn't it, Chuck? Jeepers. It's so different. Stop staring, man. It's rude. But look at those goofy clothes. Goofy? Are you blind? You are the goofy one around these parts. Huh? So while the combat system is a little off-putting to an old fart like myself, it's not something that I think won't grow on me, especially for the sake of enjoying the visuals, the sounds, and the story that I know this game has. And, you know, everybody says it's a must-play. I feel bad that this is the earliest I've been able to get to it, but man, the backlog is real. And I do want to play this whole thing before the new one comes out. Odds are that won't happen, though, again, because of said backlog. Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom launches on March the 23rd now is the new date. There's no guarantee that can't be pushed out again, although I don't know why it would. Generally, things aren't pushed out twice. But on that day... I will insist that each and every one of you join me right here for the unboxing of this gigantic collector's edition. See all the goodies therein, and of course, to be directly followed by the day one review gameplay of the game. Can't wait for that. Wouldn't mind streaming a little more of this if we get a little further along in it. Obviously, I still have a lot to learn. But I definitely wanted to do this game this Tuesday night, starting out the new year, to go ahead and foreshadow a little bit of some of the goodness we have coming your way first quarter this year and that is not the first game we're going to do obviously that's march we've got we got a lot slated for february that's going to be a busy month for us and a lot of stuff to catch up on in our current series we have going as we uh 
get through January. So lots of good things coming. I have lots of work to do, lots of catching up to do, lots of things coming your way in 2018. And I hope each and every one of you are going to be there with me for each and every last bit of it. Again, if you're watching, if you're watching the recap, however this is coming to you, I'm going to ask that you drop a like because you know that helps us out. And I'm going to ask you, if you haven't already done so, to subscribe. If you like watching people do day one reviews, if you like watching people do reviews in general, if you like watching people unbox and check out collector's editions when they show up at their door on a tractor trailer truck day one, because that's how big this dead gum thing is. And that's definitely going to happen. Something that happens a lot right here on the MC Mer Show. But we are out of time for tonight. Thank you, all of you that joined me. Had a great time. And plan to have many more great times going through this game. So far, it's just about everything I hoped it would be. And it has a chance to be much more as we are still in the opening stages of this thing. Thanks so much, guys. And we will see each and every one of you again next time.